Good morning. Today I will teach you all how to see Donan Sim. So I would like to ask you all a question. What does a Latino look like to you? Does it look like, does a Latino in your head look like these people? What about these people? If not these people, then what about this one? I'm sure most of us would associate the typical Latino to look like the last family, but why? Well, we all categorize people into certain groups due to distinct and shared phenotypes or physical features. This categorization leads to the idea or concept of race. This is the reason, race is the reason why we identify that family as white, that family as black, and that family as Latino. But Latino is not actually a race. It is an ethnicity. And ethnicity is based <coughs> on cultural identity or expression. Due to this definition of ethnicity, anyone can technically be Latino. White people can be Latino, and black people can be Latino. So without this exclu exclusivity to race, sorry about that, what, who, is a, who is a brown Latino, basically? That is what I'm trying to ask if they do not have a specific race assigned to them, like black people and white people? Well, the brown Latinos, which is what I like to call them, are actually Native American. It does not matter if you are a Mexican Native or a Canadian Native, because we are all indigenous to the American continents. This is because all natives come from the same ancestors who settled here first. Do you see the similarities between the Mexican Latina woman and her Guaguito Canadian sister? What about the Latino Mayan boy with his Navajo brother? They all share common phenotypes like brown skin, pronounced noses, thick black hair, and full lips which means, with the definition of race, that they are of the same race. I say this not to enforce or create a Native American monolith, however, because we, like other races, have varying traits within ourselves. I, for example, have somewhat curly hair compared to these people who have straight hair, but I'm still Native American. With this short clarification of race, I have just taught you all how to see Don Ancin. Let me explain what I mean by that. In the year 1492, the largest genocide in all of recorded history began. It was a genocide of Native Americans. This was the year Europeans first came into contact with America. They desired to exploit and steal every resource the Native Americans had that would benefit them, whilst also destroying everything else that they did not need. This led to the theft of the Native American goddess, Don Ancin, and the creation of her deceitful copy, the Virgin of Guadalupe. See, before the Spanish conquest, there was a temple of adoration for Don Ancin on top of a hill called Tepiac. There, it was believed that she would appear to the native people, who were known as the Mexicas and the Nahuas, and reveal great secrets to them. This is a surprisingly similar narrative compared to the Virgin of Guadalupe, who coincidentally appeared to a native man on Don Ancin's hill during the colonization period of Mexico in 1531. The Virgin of Guadalupe is a Latino icon known for converting the majority of Native Americans to Christianity. Unfortunately, through this, the Virgin of Guadalupe also symbolizes the successful colonization of most Native Americans by assimilating them into Latinos. Colonization is also literally symbolized through the Virgin, because when she appeared, she asked the natives to build a temple for herself on the same hill Don Ancin's temple was. This perfectly highlights what, what colonization is, which is the occupation and theft of Native land. Don Ancin was also the mother of the moon the stars, and the serpent sun god, Quetzalcoatl, which parallels the Virgin Mary being the mother of Jesus. 
Strangely, the Virgin of Guadalupe is also depicted with all of these celestial bodies don't on seen birth. We have the stars on her shawl, the moon under her feet, and the sun behind her. The Virgin is also sometimes depicted on top of snakes or snake-like demons, which alludes to Don Ancin's aforementioned son, Quetzalcoatl. These parallels only prove that the Virgin of Guadalupe is a colonized version of Don Ancin. Don Ancin was stolen and exploited. Don Ancin was stolen and exploited, sorry about that, in order to convert her own people, which subsequently led to their oppression. So with that, what do I mean when I say, how do you see Don Ancin? Well, when I say how to see Don Ancin, what I'm really saying is how to decolonize. For example, I just made you all see the Don Ancin, or Native American, inside of the Latino counterpart, the Virgin of Guadalupe. I also taught you all that the Latino people are actually Native American. This was done through the three through three steps that I would like to call the agents of decolonization. The first agent is identity, and it allows us to pin down exactly what something is. Identity is power, and the way we identify things gives context and history to it. This is illustrated by us identifying the Virgin as Don Ancin instead of the Virgin Mary. This gives context that the Virgin is not of Latino origin, but of Native American. The next is recognition. With recognition, we must recognize our historical oppression and how it continues to harm us today. We must recognize that the Virgin was a tool to coerce us natives into Christianity and how that subsequently led to Native American ethnocide. In short, we found out that the Virgin is a part of our oppression. The final agent of decolonization is reclamation and with it, we can finally decolonize the many things that are actually Native American. This is represented by the reclaiming of the Virgin of Guadalupe as our very own Native deity, Don Ancin. This reclamation renounces harmful colonial aspects that we recognize in the Virgin while keeping the aspects that celebrate us like the Native, like the native Don Ancin. Through these steps, we can decolonize ourselves the same way I did with the Virgin and the Mary, and, and the Don Ancin. Sorry about that. So I've already sort of identified who the Latinos are. So now I must recognize what caused their oppression and what caused colonialism, right? Native Americans are sufferers to colonialism. Colonialism is a systemic violence that seeks to destroy and exploit a race or ethnicity through a variety of mechanisms. Such mechanisms include racism, genocide, and forced assimilation. The majority of Native Americans are unaware of this historical oppression, the same way they are unaware of their true identity, being Native Americans. Because of this, it is important to understand how our people have been oppressed through these mechanisms. We basically must recognize our oppression in order to dismantle it. Now the first mechanism of colonialism is racism. Racism is defined as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their racial or ethnic identity. Racism against Native Americans began literally when the Europeans, when the European colonizers first laid their eyes on them. There exist countless writings of many colonizers that describe how primitive and ungodly the Native Americans and their culture were. The colonizers did whatever they could to dehumanize the Native American race and also their cultures with it. This allowed them to justify their salvation for these apparently um, poor, insufferable, savage people. There was also this ide ideology of mestizaje spreading around during the, colonial, the colonization period. Sorry. And mestizaje was basically um, an ideology where colonizers were obsessing with racial mixing. The term mestizo, which refers to a person of mixed blood, Native American and European blood, was a product of the hierarchical caste system you see here. 
The term, along with the caste system it came, was a form of racism that oppressed anyone who wasn't white. Black and Native Americans are at the bottom, while white are on the top. This form of racism would then lead to shame in the Native Americans and the supposed mestizos. It would be so undesirable to be Native in society that the majority of Native Americans began to try and tie in as much Spanish identity and blood with, in, within themselves. They would literally colonize themselves in a way to make themselves higher up in the social ladder. Even by saying we are mestizo, we are actively portraying the ideas rooted in mestizaje. This is why I do not like the term mestizo. This is, be this is why I don't like the term mestizo, because yeah. Um, the, idea, the idea behind mestizo is that white is desirable and Native American is not. And racism goes hand in hand with genocide, right? And these forces, I argue, synergize to incite violence among, upon our people. The Native American genocide has a varying range of estimated deaths, but the most prominent number is 175 million people. That was literally 95% of an entire race that spanned across two continents. This estimation was calculated by political scientist Professor David Smith from the University of Houston. The genocide was also primarily caused by intentional biological warfare. See, we are told a lie in school that the natives simply die, started to die in droves of diseases like smallpox, and that the Europeans weren't aware of how virulent disease, these diseases were. We are told that the Europeans got lucky because of how vulnerable the Native Americans were with virgin immune systems. However, I and many other historians do not buy this narrative. Uh, biological warfare has already been a common occurrence in other European wars. An example of such warfare would be the common act of soldiers catapulting dead bodies into the enemy bases to get them in contact with diseases on the dead body. This is why I find it rather unconvincing that Europeans conveniently became unaware of how, the virulent, of how virulent their diseases were, and especially how those diseases would typically, ca would typically cause a 90% decline in Native American communities. Unfortunately, all of this history on our genocide is often dismissed or even rejected. Our genocide is never really regarded as a genocide, even though it should. The man who created the term genocide, Lemkin, the man who created the term genocide, Raphael Lemkin, used observation of Spanish missions that converted the Native Americans to Christianity to define what he meant as genocide. This tells us that the Native American genocide is valid, and therefore it should be taught and regarded as such. Lemkin also regarded the term genocide not only as a physical extinction of a people, but as well as a cultural extinction. This leads us into forced assimilation. Forced assimilation leads to ethnocide. This is arguably the most important aspect of colonialism because it is the most recent mechanism we, as Native Americans, have faced. Forced assimilation can be illustrated through the residential schools in North America and the Catholic missionaries in the South. They had the same purpose, and that was to kill the Indian and save the man. What this means is that they were killing the culture, the very thing that made Native Americans Native Americans. Because of this assimilation, we face the identity problem previously stated, where we identify as Latino or Hispanic instead of Native American. We are not Latino, but we were taught to identify as such, even though they are, because they are misnomers. We were taught to identify as Hispanic and Latino in order to make us foreign to our own continent this is done through the use of how misnomers work. They literally eliminate the history of an object by identifying them with a fake identity, right? And so when we say that we are Latino, we are saying that we are everyone while also saying that we are no one. When we say we are Hispanic, we, as previously stated, become foreign to our land. We are saying that we are Spanish people, the colonizers when in reality, we are the native people. This leads to my previously stated struggle for identity. And this is honestly the biggest struggle Latin brown Latinos and Native Americans are facing now. We 
um, add ourselves into studies with white people and black people, and this creates disparages among um, identity and oppression. We got to go ahead and move on to the next presentation to, to wrap it up real quick. Okay, yeah. So in case point, Latinos, brown Latinos are being oppressed because they are Native American, but let, brown Latinos do not know this. We must see the Don Unseen in the brown Latinos in order to allow them to recognize their oppression. We must see the Don Unseen in the Virgin Mary. And yeah. <laughs>